So I'm just going to do a really quick uh, video. This is um, all the request about the nighttime imaging. Um, this first clip here is uh, inside a garage. Um, the garage is pretty lit pretty well with the infrared uh, light that the camera comes with. I'm going to cut to an outside view. Um, there is less infrared being able to be broadcasted. This camera is about 10 feet up in the air mounted to the side of a house. So obviously um, it's not a small garage where all that uh, infrared light is lighting up everything. So you're not going to have that full floodlight effect. I'm sure if you mount something outside that has infrared light, it would help. Um, I'm going to cut back real quick. If you notice how bright this inside of this garage is, um, that's because the infrared light fills this out pretty well. Um, I think that's one of the biggest down draws. These, these cameras are, um, they can only put so much infrared uh, floodlights on them without making them ridiculously big. Um, if I cut back to outside here, um, you know, if you, if you had a floodlight of infrared light, this would, this would pretty much be just as crystal clear as if it was in the garage. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, but you can definitely tell if someone is walking through that backyard without a doubt. Um, and, uh, it, you know, it doesn't sacrifice in daylight quality. I mean, just take a look at this clip here. Um, this is one of the main reasons why I got this kit. Um, more, more because of the, the clarity, um, that you get out of this five megapixel sensor that comes in here. I um, mean, that's crystal sharp. I, I can crop and zoom into this. Um, post-processing and and the clarity is there definitely uh, definitely enjoy the cameras for sure after having them for about a year I've had a lot of questions on regarding the setup and what I use and you know everyone's environments different um, I will tell you um, it's very basic for what I have the main concern was the quality of the camera and that they're always running um, what I have here is my my live view display of all, all the cameras um, and I just want to go over some of the main questions that I, I was always getting is is how do you download the video when you do need to download it so we're gonna click on playback and bear with the slowness this is a virtual environment because one of the down draws with this system is you need Windows 7 um, Internet Explorer to access the actual individual cameras, not the NVR, the individual cameras, because the individual cameras are fully accessible, it, you know, remotely without the NVR, and I'll, I'll go over that in a minute. Um, so, playback. We're going to download, let's say, from the backyard on Wednesday. We're going to hit search. So on Wednesday the 12th, we see that there is some motion represented by yellow. Again, this is another question that I receive a lot. How do you dictate motion? Um, I have a motion block set up in a specific area of, of notification. If something crosses its path, it will begin recording, which then when I go back to the video, I get this notification here if I look that there's motion so if I know that oh someone broke the back fence um, and I go back a day I can see where the motion is um, in that area instead of sifting through the entire day I know that there's a lot of commotion going on in this specific area now there is a lot of false positives, but I'd rather false positives than no detection at all. A lot of times it's, it could be a bug crawling on the camera, or it could be a bird. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors that come into play. Um, so we're just going to click into the area of motion and hit play here. So it's uh, 1946. So it doesn't seem like there's much going on in the frame. It could have been a car passing, you know, there's a lot of variables. But let's say we have our time frame here. So we're going to stop the video. We're going to download this little button here. And we're going to do custom time. 
So you click custom time and we're going to do 19 46 to 19 46 30. So we know this 30 second clip here is exactly what we need. So we're being very specific and I hit download. Done. Got the video. We're going to save it. Done. And that's it. So there is a hiccup with this system. Um, it it's a dot dat file, which is very unique. It's it's not a common file. Um, but download player, the NVR has a player built into it that you can download on any Windows computer. So you click download and install it. So now that we have it installed, we can close out of this and we go to our downloads folder. So we have a dot dat file, right? End player here, end player is the actual program that will allow us to view these files. So we'll double click that file. Boom. So it's been brought up as a file here. Uh, I don't know which one did I just get. So probably because I'm in a VM environment, it's not going to play correctly, but it will play. Um, my virtual machine hasn't really been set up completely it's just to do this demo but it will play with the end player um, I actually convert them into mp4 so I can edit them later on um, that's actually what I did for the YouTube video itself so let's hop back to continue answering some questions here so the cameras themselves when you remote into them this is what you get each camera has a Linux based operating system that is, to my knowledge, should be flashable to other um, security camera based firmwares because I know that they're using an ARM processor. Um, so the downdraw with this, and, and I was talking about it before, you need to install an ActiveX plugin which is unique to a Windows 7. Uh, Internet Explorer browser. It's not Windows 10 compatible. There are some down draws on it. If you don't have a Windows computer, you definitely wouldn't want to get this system if you don't because that's how you remote into the individual cameras to change internal settings. Is it necessary? No. Can you live without it? Yes. Um, in my sense I think it's essential because I'll show you when we log into this screen it'll bring us to this screen the firmwares are a generic base so there's a lot of features that don't do anything with the cameras that are installed on because it's meant for other higher-end cameras but it kinda gets loaded on you know no matter what waiting to be used on a higher-end camera so we're gonna go to configure and we'll go to system and account manage so here each camera has an account that you can actually log in remotely and control the camera this is why I say it is important because you put this on your network with a default password guess what anyone can really log into it if it's set up with a default streaming port a default username and a default password um, so this was one of the first things that I changed that was super important to me because um, you know if someone wants to have some prying eyes on, on any of these cameras uh, why you know instead of locking the door not locking the door uh, why leave it wide open um, make it a little bit harder if, if you're trying to get into the camera from an outside source so definitely want to change those um, you know change that information up so that um, you have more control over it um, now the cameras themselves have a lot of features 
I don't use anything on here besides the account management and setting up the actual IP addresses of these cameras. I did turn off cloud login. The cloud login default to this is represented in P2P settings, enable cloud. I disabled that. I disabled it because I wasn't a fan of my video traffic being routed to a server based in China and then all the way back here. Um, you know, you pay you pay for what you get. It, does it work? Yes. Am I a fan of it? Not really. Um, I know that if I set up my firewall correctly, I can use a lot other better services that are U.S. based. Um, to answer, what do I use in response to that? Angel Cam. That's pretty much it. When you log into Angel Cam. It shows you my cameras, both on the web, on iOS devices, and on Android devices. Their support is pretty solid. It's not some random group of people in China. You know, they're they're pretty quick at getting back to you if you have any questions. Um, but that's what I use. That's what I've set up um, to use with this system. Now, um... Beyond that, I mean that that's pretty much it. It, it it's a system that I, that's runs twenty four seven. All the cameras have been exposed to the elements outside, or at least um, three of them have been exposed to the outside for a year, and they're still kicking. Um, their live view is still going strong. Um, that being said, I hope that helps. If uh, if that helped, if this video helped you, at least uh, give it a likes up so uh, everyone else can see it. Thanks.